Hi, and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to do a monohybrid cross in Mendelian genetics. So the first thing that you need to do is to pay attention to what a gene you're dealing with. And for this case, we're just going to have a simple gene that deals with uh, whether or not you can make melanin or not. Melanin is the ability uh, to um, have color in your skin. So there's a little bit of melanin in my skin. Some people have more melanin, some people have less melanin. But there are some people that make no melanin. And those people are known as albino. Albino is a recessive trait, so we would use a lowercase letter to represent that recessive trait. That means that the ability to make melanin is a dominant trait. Let's say you have a cross between two individuals that both make melanin, but that are heterozygous for the ability to make melanin. So they would both be heterozygous, and heterozygous means having two different alleles. Both of these individuals are heterozygous. Both of them make melanin, even though they carry the recessive allele because they have the dominant allele, they can make melanin. When you are doing Mendelian genetics crosses, it's always a good idea to like actually acknowledge that we make gametes. So we're gonna go through the process of meiosis. I like to call this process by which we're gonna go through meiosis, I call this the table of gametes. Table of gametes. So we're just gonna go through and make our diploid individuals, having two of each allele, into haploid eggs and sperm. So this individual, this heterozygous individual, assuming that person's a male, for example, can make one sperm that has a big A in it and one sperm that has a little A in it. Of course, they have other genes in these sperm. We're just focusing on the ones for melanin right now. Same thing for this female right here. Um, she can make one egg that is contains a big A allele and one egg that contains a little A allele. Again, this is not necessarily a common practice to be very clear about the gametes that you make, but I like to include that when I'm doing genetics problems. The next step is to take the gametes that we made over here and put them into a Punnett square. Most people are somewhat familiar with a Punnett square, but what a Punnett square is, is a prediction about the possible offspring that you could get if you have a certain set of eggs and sperm. So we take these sperm and we can put it on the side of the Punnett square. And we can take these eggs and put them across the top of the Punnett square. And then we just play this game of what happens if this sperm meets this egg. And if we do that, then the genotype of the offspring is big A, big A, or you could also say homozygous dominant. And then we just continue this process. If this sperm meets this egg, the individual is heterozygous. If this sperm meets this egg, we also say the individual is heterozygous, and we write it in the same order of big A first, followed by little a. In this sperm and egg fertilization, the offspring would be little a, little a. There's a couple of approaches that we can do next to kind of think about the phenotype of each individual. One, one very easy thing to do is just to write inside the box what they look like. So this person would have this melanin, right? And so would this one, melanin. This one would also have melanin because the big A masks the presence of the little a, so they're showing the melanin. But this individual would be albino. The last step that you might need to do is to write out the phenotypic and genotypic ratio of the offspring. So in this case, the phenotypic ratio would be three melanin to one albino. And I ran out of room a little bit there, but that's okay. Uh, I noticed that I put a colon right here, but that's not necessarily a good idea, especially since if we're doing ratios, you need to put a colon right here. So maybe we do like some arrows. That's a little bit nicer. Uh, the other one we're going to write is the genotypic ratio. And we'll do the arrow thing for this one. 
um, the genotypic ratio, you have to write the ratio of the com specific combination of alleles. So here in this Punnett square, this prediction, we are predicting that there'll be one big A, big A individual, and there will be two heterozygotes, and there will be one little a, little a. Now this is, again, these are predictions. This is what we expect to happen if we do this particular cross over here. But in reality, because fertilization is random, we might not get exactly the three to one ratio of phenotypes or the one to two to one ratio of genotypes. Hope this helps you in learning genetics.